Thank you for joining us for our Ask the Expert series on adult hydrocephalus and normal pressure hydrocephalus. I am so happy to be here today with Dr. Abe Mogakar, a neurologist, and Dr. Mark Luciano, a neurosurgeon with Johns Hopkins Hospital. And they are both with the Cerebral Fluid Center for CSF Disorders here at Johns Hopkins. So thank you both for joining us. Pleasure to be here. So we're gonna do an NPH focused question today. This is something that we hear often at the Hydrocephalus Association when we take phone calls from people. So I'm actually going to read the question as it was posed on Facebook and we can just play with it from there. My husband still has difficulty walking more than one block at a time, still the same as before the shunt. His walking is still slow and his walking speeds up and he leans forward now too. Other aspects of NPH have improved, but can this be related to his NPH? So. Well, I just to answer the question first, yes, there could still be NPH and it still may be treated by the shunt. I think maybe we should talk a little bit about what is the expected time course for treatment after a shunt. Many people believe that they're going to get a, a sudden improvement. Uh, and some of that, it comes from the trial. Because during the trial, we take a lot of fluid off at once and we make these measurements really in the same day or very quickly and we see an improvement. Well, their expectation, well, now I have the real thing. I have a shunt. I should be feeling wonderful right away. And, and just out of, I mean, you and I have seen these videos. We've seen people who have been completely unable to walk. Yes. They have the CSF removal during the testing, the diagnostic testing, and they get up from the chair and walk out the door. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're saying like that expectation so is they're it, gonna, that's going to be repeated. It's a reasonable expectation right. in that sense. And, and what I, the metaphor I use is in running between a, a marathon and, and a sprint. Uh, there's a lot of fluid taken out uh, suddenly, but we don't do it again and again. The shunt we put in removes fluid, drip, drip, <laughs> drip, over a long period of time. It's meant to be there constantly and draining fluid uh, really at a slow rate constantly. It's a really different kinetics in the first place mm -hmm. of, of fluid removal. We really don't want to drain too much fluid. Okay. So it's a much more controlled and it takes longer for that reason. Another issue is this is brain surgery. Uh, there is an effect even of the brain surgery, the experience of surgery in general, the fact that a catheter is placed. Uh, Anesthesia. Yeah, that and, and, and the effect on the brain itself. So there's a recovery period for that in itself, and that that's can be more than a matter of days. It could be a week or two. Most often when, when we operate, uh, even in patients we expect in, to have a, a very nice uh, improvement based on the trial, I say, you know, it's going to take one to two weeks even for the surgical dust to settle. Uh, never mind, you know, full recovery. And so it may take that amount of time even to see some glimmer of some improvement. I always, when, when people come back for the stitch removal, uh, I, I inhibit myself from asking them too much, are you better, are you better? Because I realize it takes longer than those few weeks. If they spontaneously say, yeah, things are starting to look a little better, I say, well, you're on track. We've done studies on people at three months, four months, five months, six months, seven months, uh, repeated measures to see how they improve. We see changes throughout that whole period of time. Now, some of that is because the, it takes the brain a while to get used to the drainage and the benefits occur slowly through, through the brain. Another part is the, um, is the deconditioning the patient has. In other words, they start to take advantage more and more and be up more and more. Mm -hmm. and, and so it, whatever was de-skilled or weakened by, by the uh, debilitation of NPH takes time also to strengthen. Mm -hmm. And so this kind of goes to other causes of, of having problems walking is that, well, I haven't walked, been off the couch and walked much at all in the last you know, four or six months or longer. And so you can't expect, even with treatment of the hydrocephalus, to be up and walking strongly there afterwards. Anybody who's sick and laying down for a period of time can often have a hard time getting up. So it's a matter of your body training as well. So basically, it's a, it's a longer time course, uh, and we really expect it to be months there afterwards. After about three, four months, if we see no improvement, then we will often maybe tap the shunt or make an adjustment because another aspect is we're not sh quite sure uh, how much that particular patient needs to drain. So maybe you did well in the trial. We see that you maybe have improved a little bit, but not very much. Maybe you need a little bit more drainage. So we have, when we do use, and many neurosurgeons do use an adjustable system, we might open it up and drain a little bit more and see how that goes. And very often that's, that's what causes the improvement. So many reasons for a, a slow development over time, uh, even what end up being very successful treatments. 
And the only thing I would add to what Dr. Luciano said is that improvement can take up to a year sometimes, and it can be very slow and gradual. It may not be as dramatic as you see after the LP. And it's important sometimes to engage in intensive physical therapy because it's almost like learning to walk again. And, and you need to do that intensive physical therapy, even though you have a working shunt, to really get back to where you were before. And it sounds like you can have improvement in one symptom and not improvement in another symptom. So it could, you know, some, in, and everybody I think I've learned with hydrocephalus over the years, everybody is different and everybody responds differently. And so even talking to somebody who has had a similar journey as you might be different in how they're responding to treatment or how they're recovering. It's really important to keep in mind that we are all different and we are all going to respond to treatment and also post-op recovery differently to not set your expectations based on somebody else's experiences to give yourself time to recover. But once you're past a year or so, or you even said uh, three, six months, you're not seeing improvement, then it might be time to start tweaking the shunt to make sure that you're at the proper shunt setting, that enough fluid is either staying in your brain or coming out of your brain to help you uh, see improvement in some of the symptoms. And I think the, the point you bring up about uh, different effects on different symptoms is really important because a person may come in with all three categories, cognition, walking, uh, and bladder control. And they, yes, I'm, I'm walking better, they feel better, and perhaps the cognition's a bit better, but my bladder, is, I'm still having incontinence. It's often the wrong thing to do is to keep draining more and more and more to try and get that third symptom because that third symptom may be related to having five children or, or <laughs> prostate procedures and so forth or many other things. Right. And sometimes we have to say, you know, we know your shunt's working because you're walking better. We know your shunt's working because your cognition is a bit better. Uh, we can't get everything. And that's true, it's an individual basis. Sometimes the trial guides us as to what gets better and what doesn't, but it's not always a, a complete guide either. Of all the things that we track after the shunt goes in, uh, we track gait most closely because we find that's the symptom that responds most to shunts. And so that's the indication that the shunt is or is not working optimally. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you both so much for being with us today. I hope that you all learned something uh, through this Ask the Expert series presentation, and I really want to thank you all for joining us as well, and thank everybody on social media who submitted questions for our Ask the Expert series, and we'll see you next time.